Welcome back to week number six, year number 13 of the Cascade Valley Coyotes. Now this week we are facing the Auburn Tigers. Number 14 Auburn Tigers. This is going to be a really big test for us right now. Yes, we play some ranked teams here and there, but Auburn is a very talented team and our work is cut out for us. I think overall we stack up pretty well against them, but they've got a pretty good rush offense. So we'll see how our defense kind of goes up against that because we've had some issues against the run. Now looking at Auburn's roster, they have Aaron Humphreys as their number one guy. What? Are you kidding me? This dude is six foot six. 96 overall at wide receiver. 90 speed, 96 acceleration. This dude is an absolute stud. Okay, we have our work. This dude is like a tight end. This is like LeBron James. This is a mini LeBron James right now that we're basically playing against. They've got a really good corner, a really good halfback. It's a little bit slower, but we've seen slow running backs dominate against us. I'm not seeing a quarterback, though, and their quarterback is Andrew Rendazzo, a sophomore, true sophomore, 88 overall, 80 speed behind him. They have Michael Baker, a junior. Again, a halfback. There's some solid talent there. Their backup is actually hurt right now, which is interesting. Uh, behind this giant of a receiver, they've got Jordan Holland, who's a really good junior uh, receiver for them. They've got Henry Knighton. They've got Curtis Johnson. So there's some pretty good talent across the board. This is a very, very good team that we have to play today. Now, from a Heisman Watch standpoint, we're doing really well. Tyrell Brown, still the number one guy, had a really good performance last week overall in what was a blowout against South Carolina. We find our guy Taylor Reed, also there. Another great performance by him. Yes, there were some turnover issues, but for the most part, he's been really good this year. One of two QBs on the list right now, Tanner Hawthorne, though, jumped over. Over, uh, our guy Taylor Reed and he's sitting there the number one spot I think Taylor's personally better but you got to get some credit where credit's due this guy's been playing well now looking at the top 25 we are still the number one team Alabama still has 28 votes we don't agree with that but it is neither here nor there they don't play this week we play number 14 Auburn it's an opportunity for us to prove that we are the best but look out for USC they play number four in Nebraska if we kind of have a shaky game where we maybe win against Auburn but don't really win convincingly and USC beats number four Nebraska handily they could jump into the number one spot. From a recruiting standpoint, we have Jameer Nave and MJ Williams both visiting campus this week. So again, a very important game, a very tough game, but one that definitely matters for us right now. But I do want to give a shout out to Lloyd Griffin, a 7'8 overall athlete that ended up joining our school. He is going to be one of the best recruits we've had. I mean, not one of the best, but adding to one of the best recruiting classes we've had uh, in quite some time. 90 speed, 91 acceleration, 89 play rec. He's got 89 man coverage, 83 zone coverage. My initial assumption is he's going to be playing defensive back of some sort. But again, this guy is going to be very good with that speed and those cover skills on our team. As for the rest of the guys in our squad right now, Jack Herdyla feels like he should be joining our squad any day now. He's almost 100% locked. Uh, Jameer Nave, we're looking into him. We're feeling pretty good about that. He's visiting this week, which should put us in the number one spot. UCLA visits soon. But again, I think we're going to be in the number one driver's seat for quite some time, especially getting that Auburn. I mean, see that Washington doesn't have a visit until week 14. MJ Williams, again, visiting this week. We should be able to jump into the number two, if not number three spot uh, there as well. Schweidemann, we're kind of keeping on for a little bit of depth. We're kind of figuring out where he's going to go. Uh, Ian Scape Jr., again, the backup tight end. And then we have Greg Polk, who we are trying to work our way into that top three spot. He's about to be locked. If we do get locked out and he doesn't make a decision ASAP, we could probably buy our way into that and then be okay. I also don't remember if I brought this up in a previous episode, but Ty Lucky went to Auburn. We play Auburn this week. You can bet we're gonna make him pay. Now for our prospects visiting this week, we actually did add another guy or two. Uh, we have MJ Williams who need four swatted passes or two picks. Same thing for Jameer Nave. And then for KJ Camparial, we need 100 rushing yards. He could play running back or receiver. I kind of like him a little bit more for receiver. Just looking at his attributes overall because his stuff isn't super high for running back, but still, that's what we gotta do. It's what we gotta do. All right, little Cascade Valley run to start the game. You love to see it. And Tyrell Brown says, put me on the top of the Heisman list and keep me there forever. Auburn's a super tough opponent. This is what people said coming to the SEC, where they were expecting us to play against. And Lopez gets an interception to start the game. Are you kidding me? Big time players make big time plays right now. We need these guys to lock up here and not let them get a first down. And a great hit by Mikel Lanier to force a fourth and four for Auburn. I think Taylor Reed throwing an interception on the first pass play of the game. This is honestly a welcomed outcome. Auburn kicking a field goal and they could have easily has seven points with short field we will take every single time and tennessee just beat georgia georgia was undefeated we played them next week they just get a big loss against tennessee well right back to the run game here because that's the one thing that did well for us to start last drive well second to five action getting tyrell brown involved in the passing game because again we are not trying to throw some interceptions here tyrell brown looking great is going to be pushed out of bounds for 23 yards a lot of people doubted tyrell brown coming in this year because you know he didn't really have the best start last year and honestly towards the end of the year he picked up and did incredibly well but this dude has been so unbelievably good for Cascade Valley. And Taylor Reed throwing off his back foot. Gets a nice pass here. Carno Killis is going to be in there for 26 yards. First down again for Cascade Valley. 
A pass here to Jay Bowman. It's a dot for a first down. Auburn looked great in that first drive, but their defense is getting pushed around by Cascade Valley right now. Tyrell Brown trying to get to the edge. He's easily going to walk into the end zone completely untouched. And just like that, CBU has the lead right back. Crowd is starting to get hype right now. This is what you need to see. This Cascade Valley crowd is unlike any other. Keyshawn Anderson trying to come in off the blitz. Doesn't get there, but oh no. Reggie Kraft, I think, might have blown the assignment there. 82 is going to push two. Cascade Valley defenders down. It's Mikel Lanier bringing down Darius Beaton 57 yards later. Unreal play there by Auburn. They answer right back. Now they're in the driver's seat. See what they can do. And their quarterback quickly throws it away because he felt that heat. And they're going to slide one guy over here. Darius Beaton over to the left-hand side. Got a nice little halfback draw play here. And our guys are going to bring him down short of the mark by two. Big third down. Two yards to go. They're going to go with the QB keeper. A pitch out here. Our guys are oblivious. Yeah. Oh, Allen is not going to get there. And Emmanuel Dixon, 12 yards later, has the lead right back for Auburn. Outside of early in the game, there has not been very much defense at all in this battle. Taylor Reed is just looking for something. Sees a guy, throws it way short, and it's Lopez. His throw on the run is not exactly ideal, and he proves it again right there. Our guys know Cascade Valley needs to stop here, and we're trying to get some pressure on the quarterback. And look at this, Heinrich is going to get in there, and Randazzo goes down. So Auburn again had a great drive, but it stalls out here close to the red zone. As Cascade Valley is going to get a sack that forces them kick their second field goal of the game this one is up this one is drilled right down the middle put that man in the nfl because he is absolutely killing the game at this point and speaking of killing the game kentucky who we just beat last week losing to south carolina maybe he was a couple weeks ago i forgot both those teams we've beaten however cascade valley back out here with the ball they're going to hand this ball off to tyro brown of the wildcat and i think the offensive line forgot to block first quarter is kind of winding down here Taylor Reed feels some pressure. He's going to move around a little bit. Got a guy coming back to the ball. It's Carnell Killens. And look, we'll take a little bit of a gain here to make it third and short. Two interceptions in the first quarter is not exactly ideal. And it's something that's hurting this team. This exact moment. Reed makes a quick adjustment. He sees the blitz. He's got some room. Taylor Reed not exactly known for the speed, but he will use it when he has to. Last play of the first quarter, more than likely here. A dot across the middle to Carno Killens, who's having one heck of a first quarter. Browns had a pretty successful run game outside of that one Wildcat play. And he's looking to get some more yards here as he pounds the rock for eight. Second is short here. Nice little out route. Beautiful route by Michael Isaacs. Two guys in the backfield here with Reed. He's going to look for something. Sees a guy. And it's going to be Carno Killens who's going to get in the end zone completely untouched. What a route and throw. Defense side, they did a really good job here. It's taking them a little bit to kind of warm up and do what they need to, but this is what you need to see. Forcing stops against Auburn, making them punt the football to the most dangerous man in college football, Jay Boehm. Jay Boehm looking for something. Got some room here. Jay Boehm trying to turn it up. Jay Boehm, for the first time in his career, is trying to do something he hasn't done before. Jay Boehm is going to take it to the house. Are you kidding me? game has really turned around for Cascade Valley. Struggle to start, and it has been so much better since. But you got to also think Tyro Brown might be dead, question mark. What I was trying to get to is that you might have to consider that Jay Bohm could be up for returner of the year if he continues making plays like he's making right now. Cardinal Kinlan's though, tough play. Probably better we drop that one, though. Third down, nine yards to go. Taylor Reed's going to look for who else but Carno Killens. Carno Killens is having the game of his life right now. Young fella, get you some. Our guys just focus on containing the quarterback right now. The halfback's not doing anything. Gamlin trying to get in there. ODR is going to bring him down with one timeout left. They have fourth down right here. We're going to say call the timeout as well because we want the ball back. So did the interception hurt us? I mean, yes, it definitely did. But instead of giving up seven, the defense, which has been the best in the entire nation, in my opinion, only gives up three, which makes it a 12-point game. And we still have some time to maybe cook something up here. The Skasky Valley team, especially playing at home, this has been the most sloppy they have played in a long time. But it's just been a weird game. They haven't really gotten the ball to the guys they usually get the ball to. Jay Boehm. Stopped running the direction he was supposed to run, and Auburn has the ball on the goal line. What was Jay Bohm doing on that play? The world will never know. Auburn's got the rock on the goal line. Quarterback's going to try to flip the play. We're getting the instant pressure, but he throws a Darius Beaton, and they are going to be, assuming they go for an extra point here, only down five. We got a little cutesy with it, and it's definitely hurt us uh, a bit this game. We have got to settle down and play the Cascade Valley football that we know how to play, and it's got to involve this run game. Second is short here again. Offensive line just refusing to block at times. Tyrell Brown has had a solid game in moments, but for the most part, he's been kind of just locked up. Like under four yards per carry is just not what we're used to seeing from him this season. A risky ball and Jay Boehm getting him involved in this game is going to be an immense important of the most immense importance in this second half. First and ten. Tyrell Brown looking for something, cuts back and gets two yards. Back to back run plays here, just looking for some blocking. 
you love to see it. Tyro Brown getting 11 yards. This is what we're expecting to see. Domination on the run game. We'll play action underneath. Our guy's trying to find something, and it's Reed going for a single yard. Second and nine, third quarter again, winding down pretty quickly here. Reed in the face of danger, hits Michael Isaacs in the hands, and he just realized they're made of stone. Reed here in Shaka knows he needs something. Goes underneath to Jeremiah Butler, who we haven't hit a ton today, but that's a huge play for us on third down. If you just stop reading Taylor Reed's sideline line after, you know, the touchdowns has been great, but the interceptions, the fumble he had that nearly cost us again, it's just been unforgivable at this point. The turnovers and issues by Taylor Reed right now have just been unforgivable in a lot of ways, but we know that this is an opportunity still for him to dominate this game, to show that we can win games like this in tough situations like this. And if he can get this team this W, he'll stay in the game. But if he starts slipping again, Coach and Burger's pulling him and putting him back through Hill. First and goal again. Cascade Valley, little dump off here to Tyro Brown. Brown, though, nowhere to go. I mean, that defensive end was right on him the entire time. Second and goal here. Reed feels the pressure. Reed is trying to turn up and a Taylor Reed rushing touchdown. I'm impressed. Cascade Valley's defense is in the driver's seat with a 12 point lead. They know that it is their time to shine here and get some stops. Second and 13, they go back with another run here, and now they've got plenty of room, but Reggie Kraft is having none of it. Third down, three to go. Gambling is going to be there, and I think he almost had him. That was so close to being a stop. Auburn continues to push the run game, which I'm surprised about, and our guys are struggling to bring him down, but they are, for the most part, controlling it. Second and nine, Dino Gambling and company. We get there. They're going to throw one to the wide side. Remember, if Simmons gets an interception the rest of his college career here, he is the single record holder for career interceptions. Keep in mind that record would be for just Cascade Valley, but still, it's incredible. Mike Hemphill had 19 in his college career. And Simmons is trying to add up to that, but he's not going to do it on this play as Henry Knighton runs out of bounds himself. Our guy's trying to get a stop again here. The quarterback, Rodazzo's going to fumble the football. It's picked up by Smith, however, and I think Auburn might have gained a yard or two. Anthony Odiari has been a grown man. He has seven tackles, four for a loss, three sacks this afternoon. He has been that guy, pal. Auburn back under center here. They're going to move their guy over, beaten in motion. He's been electric today, killing us for yard after yard. Lanier watching in the middle. They're going for something. They go to that guy across the middle. It's going to be Angle bringing in a huge catch. And he's down at the goal line. He goes for a quarterback draw. We weren't expecting it. And Odiari maybe tore that man's ACL, but he is still in the end zone. We have a single digit game yet again. At some point, this game was laughable where we thought there's no shot we lose. We're walking away with an easy W against a very good ranked opponent. Now we're finding ourselves fighting for our lives with three minutes and 30 seconds left. Five receiver moves over in motion again. Gambling and the company have got to make sure they lock up Auburn and don't let them get anything major here. The run game, though, has been so good for them as they get another first down. You got to give credit where credit is due. We have hit Auburn's quarterback a million times today. We have been crushing their running backs with bone crushing hits, and they keep breaking tackles. These dudes are fighting for their lives, and are you kidding me? He is running for the longest run of his day. Emmanuel Dixon goes 45 yards in a scoring territory. Auburn feeling pretty good right now. Their quarterback has all day, throws a dot here. Lanier Bruh. forces the fumble and our guys dive away from it. Are you kidding me? That would have sealed the game. Mikel Lanier doing what he does best, making a play. And then we just saw someone sell so hard and miss the fumble recovery. I am sick. We don't ever do this in the series, but look at the instant replay. Lanier forces a fumble. Reggie Kraft is better to lose his scholarship. I've never seen someone dive worse in my entire life. Look at this ball. Bruh. We're cutting your scholarship. Our guys have got to do something here. We cannot afford to give up more points, and it's looking like it might just be that as Emmanuel Dixon gets three more yards. Our guys know this is a big opportunity here to get a stop. Lanier and company, Donnell Gambling gets absolutely thrashed, and the good news is we get the ball back with two minutes left, and they're probably going for two here to make it a three-point game. Our guys are here just trying to make something happen. The quarterback rolls, and I just watched the guy run away. I what are we doing, Cascade Valley? Coach McMurvin is beside himself right now. He is tossing out scholarships left and right. And when I say tossing them out, I mean getting rid of them. These dudes are getting cut from the team immediately. Taylor Reed and company, though, still some of the best in the nation. They can get this job done. And Joe McBride keeping it moving down the field and staying in balance. You'd love to see it. In the situation that we are in now, we do not want to score too quick. A field goal is fine. Going into overtime is okay in college. But we don't want to be in a situation where we score a touchdown and give them a ton of time to go down the field with all the timeouts in the world. But over a minute left, if we can score with maybe 10, 15 seconds left and win this game that way, that's going to be fine by us. And Tyrell Brown balling out right now. Reed back under center. Or under center, Roderick Johnson gets taken down. Maybe a face mask, if you ask me. 20 seconds and a dream. 
for Derek Johnson pushing forward. They're going to say he's down at the one. Okay. I like our situation now. We can score from here and be fine. There's a play coach Mervin Mervin loves. That is the goal line toss. Teams don't know which way it's going. They try to stop it, but they can only hope to contain it. As we're going to get in the end zone with 14 seconds left. We're going to have a lead. It's going to force them to score a touchdown. This is what we needed from Cascade Valley. You never end up seeing a kickoff in this series, but Lord, we are having a kickoff right now because I don't want them to have an opportunity to return a kick for a touchdown. And then I'm crying in the car. They have all their timeouts. They're in a good spot. They're lining up in a single back formation, which feels kind of wild to us. And they are running the football. I got some questions. This kind of feels like a Hail Mary situation right now in 10 seconds. We got to be careful of the intermediate stuff too. Randazzo fighting for his life. He's going to break the tackle. Anyone stop this man. They used their second to last time out with three seconds left, and they're in Hail Mary territory. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I'm like really nervous right now because I've had I've lost games to this before. <laughs> so I'm just sending everybody back. <laughs> oh, God, this is way too close. Hold me. We're going to walk out of here with a W. This is a scary home game. Number 14 team nearly gets the W on us. We were fighting for our lives. And then what happened? The Cascade Valley Coyotes are still the number one team in the nation, at least for now. Carnell Killen, six for 174 and two touchdowns. He killed it. And then I felt like he never got the ball again after that six catch, which it is what it is. But still, a W is a W. Woo! Taylor Reed definitely had a rocky game. I have to imagine this probably gets him off of the Heisman list, if not this week, then next week. But 354 yards, two touchdowns seems pretty solid, but three interceptions and a fumble is not going to get you very Heisman uh, favored votes. On the ground, Brown, 19 for 79, two touchdowns. He doesn't really have the stats to really showcase how important he was today, but he was a vital part of the team in converting third downs. And then receiving, again, Cardinal Killens was that guy. Six for 174, two tutties. I'm really disappointed we only got the ball to Jay Bohm two times for 37 yards, but they really schemed against him and kept him really away from being open. Defensively, Mikel Lanier, 11 tackles. None were for a loss, but he was saving us from having touchdown scored after touchdown scored. This dude even forced a fumble and Reggie Kraft sold. Reggie Kraft still a solid game, five tackles, but the junior red shirt has me very highly considering benching him for somebody else. From a sack perspective, big pause if needed, but Odiari had three, Heinrich had two, one for Wilson and for Jesse Rivers and interceptions. We didn't have a single one. That kind of frustrates me a little bit, but still we did enough to get the job done. We cannot play like this week after week after week. We have to play a very hungry and angry Georgia team who just got their first loss of the season against Tennessee. Every team that plays us wants to prove a point. And that point is that they're better than us. But ultimately, if we play like we are supposed to, ain't nobody better than them Coyotes. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one.